It's 9.30 p.m. It's a Saturday and I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about the watches I've owned during the, the time I've had this channel. I've owned so many watches, guys. And this isn't what they call a humble brag nowadays on the internet. I'm saying that I've just flipped so many watches and I had a question recently and it asked me, which watch do I regret selling the most? And I think I would have to choose two. I can't just choose one, of course. I'm Simon the Watch Guy. <laughs> I, I miss two watches. Terribly. Terribly miss two watches. And I miss the SNX G47K1, which was a Seiko 5 in gold. My friend sent it to me all the way from Singapore. Brand new watch from Singapore. And when it got here... I can't tell you guys how much I loved the watch. It was one of the first watches I ever loved. I didn't just like it. I had strong feelings for this particular watch. I loved it. I just was mesmerised. The texture on the dial. It was absolutely stunning. And because a friend had sent it to me, there was some sort of sentimental value in there as well. I really really regret selling that one because I actually sold it for about £70, say $80. And nowadays, if you try to buy that watch now, you're looking at £140, £150. And that might even be used. That was a big regret. I, I, it's not so much from the financial side of it, I regret selling it. It's just because it was just such a beauty of a watch. The 7S26 admittedly wasn't great, it was the reason I sold it. It wasn't accurate. In fact, it was quite poor, the 7S26 accuracy. Um, but, it wasn't regulated, of course. Um, but the thing was just a tank. I really give that a bang. I, I knock that a few times. And the watch just took it and continued on, you know? Uh, and and when I did knock it, the accuracy didn't get worse. It it stayed the same, so it didn't cause any severe damage inside. Anyway, my second watch of choice is the Victorinox Inox or Inox. I severely miss that watch. I really every single day. <laughs> I kid you not. Every single day, I think about repurchasing that watch, doing a rebuy. Every single day. You can bet your bottom dollar tomorrow, Sunday. I'm going to think once more. Should I purchase the Victorinox again? That was one of the watches I think that I always felt. It was like the kid in the playground who. He was a really tough kid. But he didn't need to boast about it. He didn't need to tell anyone. You just sort of. You could look at it and you just knew. You just knew that watch was a tough Son of a gun. <laughs> you you really did. And, and, and what's more than that, it was subtle about it. I mean, yes, it was a big slab of stainless steel on your wrist. But the watch didn't have... You know, like the Casios, like they, they have a fair bit of text on them. And, you know, you've got... I've got this one here. And you can see, you know, G-Shark and Reverse. And you've got all the, the, the lettering on the screen. The Inox didn't have that. It just... You just knew that that was a bad... That was a bad watch, and that was and when I say bad, I mean that in a good way. It was it was a it was a tough cookie, a real tough cookie. And I think it it, it had a mineral glass, which is one of the things you know. Casios have the the mineral, um, but sapphire it had, it had a sapphire glass, and I thought that was fantastic. The second hand hit every single marker on my particular Inox. And you seriously struggle, I mean, you seriously struggle to find that in a watch. So my question to you watching the video, what have you sold that you really miss and you're thinking about rebuying? Or what watch have you sold that you don't think you'd ever buy again, but you, you, you do actually miss it? Really interested to hear some of your thoughts and uh, comments about this one. Okay, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.